Why have you come to the interview? I want to clear my conscience. Some people suffered because of my business. I thought I would earn much from scratch. It's just a nice business. I haven't called you, didn't know about you. You are some kind of exceptional. All exceptional ones are in prison. It's high time to quit. There is no way through. Everyone is guilty. Hello, my friends. It's been a long time. Today's episode will be dedicated to drug business in Russia. Today's guest is a guy who came from a far Ural city. He was dealing with all kinds of drug supply for final consumers, and today we'll talk about his earnings from this and why he is here today. How much were you earning being a part of drug trade? Just like any new people, who want to blend into the business, I thought I would earn much from scratch, two, three thousand dollars. But initially my income was nearly three hundred dollars. This is a decent amount for a student who is accommodating with mom, but I hoped for more. Later on, when I was promoting, working with different shops on different positions simultaneously, my income increased several times. That were decent amounts for living. Okay, how much were you earning being on top? Two and a half thousand dollars would be a fair amount. Two and a half thousand is not an overwhelming amount. Guys earn such money working as car mechanics at service stations. Okay, what were your functions? What job did you do? The thing is, to become a car mechanic you need to know something. You're gonna have skilled hands who will to work? Yes, but you won't start working there from the off. But here it's presented as anyone can do it. Actually it is so, but to do it properly you need knowledge, experience, just like anywhere. To do what? Even a drug hide. If you do them like in manuals, to go to a park in the evening to make a photo first before you're hiding. You will be jailed in 15 minutes, I'm sure, if there is a single cop near. But if to make like I showed, smartly, yes, smartly, not bending, make pictures stealthily from the chest, then you will work a bit longer. However, imprisonment is just a matter of time. What was your position? Initially, I was a courier, just like anyone, then gradually started solving some administrative issues and also have been working as a recruiter, a person who recruits distributors into the shop. New couriers? Yes, I've been bringing new couriers into the shop. That was quite simply to do, actually. So, a courier and a distributor is the same person, right? Surely. I also saw some funny words in the internet while preparing to the interview. Uh, D-boy? Yes, it's a slang word, yeah, D-boy. A pusher also, right? I prefer pusher. Sounds better. D-boy sounds childish. Yes, sometimes even shops treat their couriers like nothing. And it's not a good treatment of people who bring you money. Okay, we cleared out your role. You were a courier. You've made hides of drugs. Also saw words like heat, hot load. Yeah, heats, hot loads, fixes, whatever. I got it. Okay, how is Russian drug selling business arranged? The whole hierarchy from bottom to top. Am I right that you were the lowest element of the chain? I was the lowest then, then promoted higher, right? Yes. Okay, let's look into the whole chain, starting from bottom. From distributors, first go drug edits, the users of the product, then go distributors, who leave the hides for them, who is above. Then goes the store. A store is a person who keeps huge amounts of the product. 
If the shop is tiny, then there are hundreds of grams. If the shop is huge, there are dozens or hundreds of kilograms. So he rents a garage and keeps it there. He receives orders from the administrator that he needs to put a hide. Nobody says him where to hide. He chooses the place himself, right? He hides a kilo here and marks the coordinates. Yes, yes, right, uh, just like a courier packs or doesn't pack the stuff, because there are couriers, especially young ones, whom it's better to give already packed stuff, for him to be clear what to do. And for more experienced, they give a kilo or half kilo, yes, they give a half kilo or less, in a packet or in a box from Xerox. It must be with double Ziploc and a proper package. Most often a quality sticky tape. For an end user it's better to use a bright colored tape. There are little internal rules that foil doesn't go with snow. It's bright and the client can lose it easily. In winter it's better to use a bright sticky tape, in summer foil is ok, because sticky tape quickly turns into grey lying on the ground, dust sticks on it. How much drugs have you held in your hands at once? Nearly half kilo I've held. What drugs? Cocaine, amphetamine, weed. Amphetamine, hashish, candies, different. What candies? Ecstasy, MDMA, whatever it can be, I don't care. I've never been interested. For me, it's just a name to pick a needed product. So, while hiding the drugs, packed in one gram or half gram, what's the tiniest dose you've sold? There are shops that sell 0.2 grams of amphetamine. Maybe someone needs tiny doses of drugs, and the shops seek to satisfy the need. But the hottest supplies are half grams and a gram, for the drugs that are taken by snorting, and bigger loads for the smoking drugs, 3-4 grams for hashish and weeds. How does the process of hiding look? Extremely simple. You need to choose a place you go to. Let's go to a nearest park. Can we go there? Yes, but parks are fairly dangerous places, because they are frequently used. You mean too many eyes? It's not about many eyes, it just looks strange. A young guy walking around a park with a phone and makes photos, bands and so on. Couriers don't work long who walk around parks, yards. It's better to pick a direction you want to go, for instance, go to a supermarket and do something on the way, because most likely you know the route. It's not the first time you go to the supermarket and you won't lose yourselves and think where to go. You mean a familiar route? Not to get stuck? Yes, or to explore the place before if you are in another city check maps, talk to local guys, just like we did in Western or Eastern Russia. We've never sent anybody to Southern Russia, it's a territory of other people, just like an internal territory agreement between big shops, like territory division of drug cartels. Internet platforms are not so popular on the South, unlike Western Russia. People prefer to pick up drugs or buy them from familiar pushers who deliver the heat for them. Oh, okay, I got it, like it used to be, from hand to hand, like gypsies did. Okay, you go to another city, as you say, you check how local cops work, how do you do it? Well, I'm an easy-going person, just go to walk around the streets, to drink beer, meet some locals, chat with them, 
Tell them that I came to buy a car. Ask if I can get some weeds here. Where it's better to buy, in what districts. So you clear this out a bit. Then you go there on your own. But there are districts, for example, on the URLs, where cops go patrolling after 7 p.m. So you realize it's better to go in the morning. So somewhere parks are intensively patrolled, somewhere yards are intensively patrolled. So it's better to know beforehand. So we came to a place with nobody nearby. It's very important for no one to bother us. In such circumstances we need to bend to make a hide. We'll hide this thing, a package of hashish. First we need a guiding line, because a junkie is a maximally stupid person. He may have problems even with this past. That's why let's pick the tree, make a little hole and press snow on it. So we hide the package here and put some snow on it. Also, we can leave the paper bag as a guideline. Yes, we'll tell him that the staff is near the paper bag. Hopefully, it won't be blown away by the wind. So, we make a close photo and another, a bit away, a wide shot. I think he won't have problems. Everything must be done smoothly, minimum moves. So, if you make a hide and there is a problem, like now, the snow is solid, it's better to make a hole with your foot, not bending, in order not to be so suspicious. If you bend, it's obvious that you are looking for something, but if you stump, it's not so suspicious. So, without dead giveaway, smooth and quick. How many heights of different weight can you make for one hour? 40. Yes. I mean, if I'm in a familiar place and I know how to work here, so easily 40. So you put the height, mark some guideline for a junkie to find easily, make photos, send the GPS coordinates, Yes, yes, make GPS coordinates. You save them in a special directory in the phone. Normally I made screenshots of GPS coordinates, so first went a screenshot, then two photos, one close, one wide. Then another screenshot that will relate to another height. I got it. 40 per hour, okay. How much were you paid for one height? Starting from five dollars. What do you mean from? This is for the least weight. Then for every gram there are extra one and a half dollar. Funny money indeed. But if it's eight grams, you'll have extra six dollars. Nearly ten bucks for one hide. Sorry, always had problems with math. What was the biggest hide? The biggest. I never tend to work with big weights. Maybe a hundred grams was the biggest height. What are the favorite places where you and your colleagues used to hide drugs? I always seeked to work in forests due to the customer security. Many people think that it's easier to take the height in the city, but I always preferred to walk a bit far from cities, in one hour of bus drive. You'll take it calmly, instead of sneaking around the yard, pretending you are looking for lost keys. Funny and stupid. Of course, I used to walk in yards, but it's inconvenient to walk there. Many windows, customers often don't find the stuff. As for forest, a squirrel won't take it away. What's the most favorite place for drug hides in cities? I'm quite a resourceful person, found many places. I've heard about magnets, stuff is left using magnets under benches of bus stops or near houses' entrances. No, neither benches nor entrances. It's better to hide under a sticking out roofing slate, something like this. Some places that hardly accessible for seagulls. A seagull 
is an experienced drug user who stick around looking for others' hides or buys stuff and explores the place looking for more drugs. So a place hardly accessible for such, with glass wool for instance. How many your friends or couriers who used to work with your shops were busted during putting hides? Almost everyone whom I've been contacting regarding this job is in jail now. This is true, almost everybody is in prison. What if a client comes to the point with coordinates and photos, but cannot find the stuff he already paid for? What next? He starts to write to the shop? There is a dispute created, and as an experienced person, I see when a client is lying. And in 95% of cases people lie that they didn't find the package. Sometimes there are three junkies, the first one came and took the load, but didn't tell about it to his two peers. He would blame us most loudly, that he didn't find the stuff, you just calm him down. Dude, come on, the stuff was lying there, no one put it on its feet. Sometimes they do covered setups, pretend that someone else found the stuff before they arrived to the place. But you see that the ground is wet and the weather is sunny, so it would stay wet for 40 minutes, only before becoming dry. In winter it's also obvious when the snow is freshly burrowed, when not. Do they make photos for opening dispute? Just like on AliExpress they do, yeah? They make photo to show I was here, found nothing. Yes, but if the customer already has many purchases in this concrete shop, let's say 30, he will be treated in another way. They may believe him he didn't find anything. Or a seagull stole, or a dog found the package. It may be, especially when young couriers work. Often their hides are not found because they are afraid, maybe lazy and make hides in standard places, under window sills. But seagulls always check window sills. Like a hobby, on the way to a supermarket, check all window sills. Tell us, please, what drugs did you try? Just like anyone else, smoked weeds, tried hashish, snuffed methadrone, tried amphetamine, Nothing criminal, actually. I've never been an addicted user, but tried something. How many times did you try drugs? Maybe ten times. Not many. Yep. How long have you been working in the drug shop? More than a year. Look, couriers are lower class. Then goes a store. A courier, a store. The store needs someone to bring the stuff. So the transporter, if the shop is big, if not, the store will buy the stuff from wholesalers. So the shop owner buys the stuff from a well-known platform named at a mythical creature, gives the coordinates to the store, the store comes and takes. Do many couriers collaborate with cops and hand them the hides over? Nobody from couriers work professionally with cops. Sometimes a police officer can obtain the access to an internet drug shop, he can see the list of actual hides, track which were bought and send the task force there. So if a person bought today the stuff, most likely today he will take it. So having spent four hours, the cops will arrest the junkie. Look, if a customer ordered the stuff today, paid for it, when he would most probably go to take the hit. Most likely he'll go to take it without delay. The drug addicts, you know, fire in the hole, as they say. That was the chain of distributors. They do technical work. Transporters deliver drugs to stores, stores give to couriers, couriers hide packages. Who is on top of the structure? You mentioned that drugs can be purchased in shops. I'm interested in drug manufacturers in Russia and shops. Couriers are lower class. If they go to jail, the shops don't care, they'll find another one. 
I wonder where all drugs in Russia are sold. I know how it used to be in the 90s, the gypsies sold all drugs. How does the process look like today? Where can I buy drugs if I need them tomorrow? You mean wholesale amount? Not necessary wholesale. If I need a gram, for instance, where can I buy a gram of drugs? Go to Hydra and buy, simple as that. What's the Hydra? I realize it's a shop or something, it's in the internet. It's a platform like AliExpress that places different drug shops on it. You mean just a marketplace? Yes, just a marketplace. They sell whatever, except for weapons as far as I know. So Hydra is a marketplace where a shop owner or a person willing to start selling drugs? So what does he do? Buys a page there? Yes, you write to the administration of the Hydra that you want to create a shop. They send you the terms and conditions. I don't know today, but they used to be fairly adequate. So you can start from 300,000. Is it true that the shops on the first page of Hydra pay to be on top? I have such information. So they pay $80,000 monthly? Yes. How does the process of payment look like? The payment is made by Bitcoin. You can pay with internal exchange of Hydra. You can send the funds to their account on your personal link. So anyone who is familiar with Bitcoin understands me. So there are many means, some are extremely simple, some shops accept Kiwi, but Kiwi payments are not anonymous, you can be detected. Why have you come to the interview? I haven't called you, didn't know about you. You wrote me that you want to confess as a drug dealer, drug distributor, a member of a drug cartel. What is it? A cry of your heart? Will to clear conscience? To become famous? However, you are in a mask. I want to clear my conscience. Some people suffered because of my business. Who would have suffered anyway, even without me? But I took part in someone's death or destroyed family. How many people died because of your actions? I think one, two persons. At least, yeah? Yes, we used to sell equality stuff, as for me. So I don't think I killed someone, maybe because of overdose only. Maybe I want to explain those people who think of going to work there. And maybe want to become anonymous, to escape from cops. I just want to explain those people that nothing depends on them. Before getting to their hands, the staff passes a long chain of elements, starting from manufacturer who bases in Russia, then the person who transports the staff to the store. For instance, a big wholesale store inside a shop. Then goes a smaller one. Then maybe another transporter who will bring the staff from Far East or, on contrary, from St. Pete to the URLs, then his local store, and finally himself. So, he is the seventh person in the chain. So you shouldn't forget about the owner and maybe some Mr. Officer who sits as one of the shop's administrator. So you cannot be on a safe side. Everyone is guilty in the end, of course. However, you don't exonerate yourselves, I don't. Are there many girls among the lower class of the pyramid, among pushers and couriers? Indeed, there are girls in the chain sometimes. They look like men, like in similar businesses. They grow quickly until the administrator. It's beyond my explanation. 
I saw shops where girls were working as a store manager or as an administrator. No one from them did their job properly at all, but they've been working for a long time and promoted due to it. If there is a tiny skinny girl who looks like a schoolgirl with a satchel, what cop in his right mind would guess to stop the schoolgirl for security checking? First, you need to be a woman to check another woman. Well, yes, and the official witnesses must be of the same gender, and the officer. They may name you a pedophile, write a claim. Who needs the problems? Are there principally forbidden places for heights? Surely, surely, there are forbidden places, because drug dealing business, just like any criminal business, is just a bunch of fucking marginals, so you won't stop them from hiding drugs in graves in kindergartens. In graves? Yes. There is nobody on a cemetery, very convenient. So you won't stop them from doing this, but with a system of harsh penalties introduced by Hydra. So the hides are not made there. So not because of moral principles, but due to penalties. So only by fining them. The shop's administrators are punished, then they punish own couriers. For what? For hiding drugs on a cemetery? Yes, on a cemetery, near children's playground, near kindergarten, schools and government offices. How many couriers take drugs? Almost everyone. So, where would you take a dose? To steal from packages? Shops give discounts to couriers. What give? Discounts. Come on, by here. At cost price. Either at cost price or for free, or a bit more than at cost price. Some work for doses. There are addicts who work purely for doses. Are there many errand junkies among couriers? Quite a lot. I think nearly 40%. How much does a shop earn monthly? In million dollars. If it's a federal network between 10-15 cities, they would earn from $300,000 till 1 million. These were the shops I've been communicating with. What do they sell? Name the list of illegal drugs of an average shop on Hydra. It's forbidden to sell spice on Hydra. It's impossible to understand what's the substance. You cannot just write spice on an item. You need to write JWH210144. You mean the formula? Yes, for the client to know what is he buying. But spice is not popular nowadays at all. Only local dealers sell it in Telegram to earn $2,000 monthly, or even less. What are main connection channels in drug selling business? Let's say a courier connects to the store manager, he connects with suppliers, they with manufacturers. How do the links of whole chain communicate in drug dealing business? Someone who takes own job not seriously communicates through email, electronic mail. Yes, there are anonymous mailboxes. This is Proton Mail. Today Russian government blocked it. So communicate using Proton Mail, then goes Telegram, a bit more complicated because not everyone can download and use it. Install? Yes, yes, they are marginals. So, normally Telegram, as far as I understand. Telegram, but mainly Jabber. Jabber? Yes, on some interesting servers. On own ones, you can use private servers. Clear. Did you have to give bribes to cops? No, never. I've never been arrested. But normally they give. Give for what? If you are caught while making a hide in the act? Not always they catch in the act. Sometimes you get in trouble while security checking on the streets. Bad luck, let's say. They stop you, then you start talking. 
Maybe the courier would just pay for being free. Maybe he will turn in somebody or agree to collaborate. Cops will inform him where and when he can walk. For instance, they know the district they normally patrol. So he may go here only. This is how a courier gets on protection. In exchange for what? In exchange he gives them money? No, why money? They will detain clients to shake off money from them. Ah, you mean to improve statistics? It's not beneficial for them in financial terms to grab one courier. It's better if a courier will give sometimes coordinates of heights, let's say every fifth or every tenth. They will grab the junkies that came to pick the package. One they will arrest, from second would take money, that's it. Okay, I came to take the stuff, the cops arrest me, what sum should I have to give a bribe? Do you know exact sums? Or it's just your guesswork? I only can tell what I heard from others. It's the matter of case. Cops are people like anybody. Maybe now they need only 100 bucks to release you. Dollars. Yes, dollars. If it's a province, he may be interested in a sum starting from 500. Okay, I know that you know, you've told me before. How much? 500 dollars? From 500 in province to 5000 in Moscow. 5000? So I am arrested with a dose? 100 grams. 100 grams? You'll pay 5000 and that's it. They will take my drug. Now they'll leave it for you. For me? It depends on cops. If you're a nice, kind guy with hashish, they realize that no one will die because of the shish. Come on, bro, give us money and be free. Go and have a smoke to forget the day. But if you have, let's say, heroin, you won't escape so easily. If the cop is not a scumbag. If he is, maybe he will take your bribe. So a Rastaman can get away, but a junkie will be arrested. Yes? Yes. We didn't close one question. What do shops normally sell? Is an average shop selling only one type of drugs or it sells everything? Weeds, heroin, amphetamine, pills, everything. There are specialized shops that deal with weed only. Or let's say only natural product. They sell only acids, LSD-25 and loads of different weeds and joints, hashish and so on. There are shops, 95% from whole amount, that have anything, amphetamine, methadrone, MDMA, whatever you want. What's the most popular stuff? Nowadays, methadrone, the most popular drug for the youth. What is it? I've never heard of. I heard about amphetamine. Yes, methadrone, amphetamine. Methadrone is a type of amphetamine. It recently appeared. I saw the word a couple of times in the internet. As far as I know, this drug is two years old. At least I know it for two years. Someone says it's like a cocaine. I tried it. It's a usual euphoretic. Like ecstasy? Yes, but its quality level keeps dropping from month to month, because the demand on it is rising tremendously, and surely it cannot be manufactured in normal conditions. Have you distributed cocaine through hides? Well, our shops didn't have too much cocaine, because I've been working in the URLs, so people aren't rich and they don't have money for cocaine. So what do they buy? Mephedrone? Amphetamine? Mephedrone? I know that on the Urals, Chelyabinsk, Zlataust, Perm, these areas, they prefer intravenous drugs, heroin, methadone. I've never been working with both heroin and methadone. I've been offered to work with heroin, but I refused. It was too much for me. So, if we divide the drugs into soft ones, like smoking weed, hashish, then disco synthetics, like MDMA ecstasy, Let's include amphetamine, cocaine, and harry and methadone. 
Of course, weed is most popular, right? What goes next? Ecstasy? Actually, weed is not so often bought. From all natural drugs, people most often buy hashish. People are poor, so they need less hashish to get stoned. Then goes weed. Then follow mushies. They say the mushies grow in Belarus and Russia even. The dope heads collect them in forests. Dope heads collect, but real mushies are spores. So people order sponges with spores. Water them and they will grow. Then just cut them and that's it. Who's on top? Manufacturers. Or those who bring stuff from abroad. Nothing is brought from abroad except for cocaine for obvious reasons. I got it. Coca leaves don't grow here. Only in mountain areas of Peru, Ecuador. Yes, they don't grow here. The rest is manufactured here in Russia. To bring pills from Europe, some shops order them from there. But they are far more expensive. They say there is much ecstasy in Baltic countries and Poland, yeah. I don't know about nowadays, but they used to bring it to Russia from Baltic countries and Poland. I don't know for sure. Never dealt with pills directly from abroad. But normally it's not necessary ecstasy. It may be a synthesized substance acting similar like ecstasy. Because e-bombs are expensive, complicated in manufacturing and transporting, like any pills. Well, yes, they take much place. No, it crumbles easily. These pills are pressed manually. These are not usual medicine pills that pressed by a usual medical press. These are pressed manually, but someone on a kitchen, let's say so. All this is done here. 98% of whole stuff is manufactured in Russia, including weeds. Everything is grown in greenhouses, etc. Everything except for cocaine is manufactured on the territory of Russia. Why do you think so? Or how do you know? Why so sure? Because I know. Most often it's a marketing trick. Look, we have foreign stuff. No one would check if it's foreign or not. And if you only tried pure cocaine, so they can sell 40% as a pure powder and so on. Most often quality says for itself. Because when you are dealing with something brought from abroad, this is of very high quality. You see it even when packing it. Everything is even, properly packed. All logos are visible. Here everything is manufactured homemade by chemist students. Everything will be of poor quality. Half of pills you would get as powder. How much cut drugs are in Russia? Speaking about purity of the product. Let's take amphetamine as the benchmark or cocaine. So 100% is the benchmark. How pure are drugs in Russia? It depends on many factors. As we've mentioned, there are seven persons in the chain, or even eight, and everyone can cut drugs on his own or upon someone's order. It's hard to say. I've never dealt with deliberately cut stuff and never cut by myself. What for? In general, in Russia drugs are 40% pure, 70, 90. If we take salts, especially popular ones, like methadrone, there will be only 30% of active substance. It all sounds awful. So, from your experience, give us the map of most drug-consuming regions of Russia. First of all, these will be our two biggest cities, on clear reasons. So, Moscow, St. Pete, then the cities in the Urals, Perm and Yekaterinburg. 
There is a very funny YouTube channel, Tao EKB, where they post a video almost every day where another pusher is arrested. And it's a miracle, the cops are already in his apartment. Maybe they have a special courier detector, because they don't give themselves away at all. They arrest on the streets also. Funny to watch. Moscow, St. Petersburg, Ekaterinburg and Perm, right? What about Kazan, Ufa and other big cities? Ufa is almost no, because it's a Muslim city maybe. I don't think, just living standards are okay there. Perm is a shithole. Kazan has high living conditions, there is much use there. And yes, they consume a lot. We can add Kazan to the list as the fifth city. Kazan is a city full of drugs and criminality. Nabirizhne Chilny also. I don't think Nabirizhne Chilny is also. Maybe it's seen because the city is little. So regarding transportation, St. Pete is a key city. As far as it concerns the URLs, I don't know, but Yekaterinburg and Perm are on the crossroads, and everyone who goes from eastern to western Russia crosses these cities. And of course, someone is controlling it, and some stuff would stay there. And it would be cheap there. That's why there are many drug addicts there, and so on. Who earns most of all? Shops or manufacturers? If we compare them in terms of profits and risks, I would say that a manufacturer is in better position. Because he sits somewhere in a garage in Siberia, where there is no one in 200 kilometers around. But the shop must be in touch with everyone, so it takes risks to some extent. And maybe they get suspicious because of the stuff they buy. I don't know. I didn't use to contact manufacturers. Mostly they are students who purchased a set from Hydra and that's it. A set of what? A set of several components that should be mixed in a proper order under a certain temperature and you will get the needed substance. Of course its purity will be low. Okay, let's have a short flash quiz. Did you have a nuclear family? Yeah, mom and dad. Is your family well off? Yes, it is. As far as I understand, you went to drug selling business right after school. Yes, I've been studying in the university, in police academy. Police academy? Yes, it looks hilarious. So I had some knowledge regarding some processes. Operational activities? Yes, about how they are performed. I just knew how they should be done, not how they were performed in real life. I've been a good student and a good pupil in school. Have you graduated from police academy? No, I gave up. Why did I need it? I earned well. On drugs. You were studying in police academy and selling drugs at the same time. Yes, yes. I used to make hides before and after studies. Sweet life, I'd say. Have you been legally working anywhere? Yes, I've been working in many places. Like any young lad, at car wash, in construction, even with sales a bit in the internet. I've tried many jobs, it wasn't like I never worked anywhere and suddenly wanted easy money. I just wanted to be financially independent and haven't found anything better than selling drugs. I was retarded, what can I say? It's better to live in poverty, to grow up potatoes and eat them instead of selling drugs, because potatoes wouldn't at least kill you or send you to prison. Okay, how have you reached the conclusion that you need to quit it? You are a young folk, you have an easy job, just have a walk, make some hides and you have 3000 monthly. What made you quit and publicly have a word about it? Mm -hmm. 
Well, when you are working there for a long time, you face with much filth there. And everyone in Russia is a law unto himself a bit. You think you are cool. It's just a nice business. Like they say, I need something to eat, something to do. Then you see it as not good, not bad. Like not black, not white. All this is brown, colored like shit. Because honest persons are extremely rare there. I was lucky to work at least with adequate ones, who at least don't leak you to police. But when you see one, another is jailed, you realize once your turn will come. But mostly I gave up because I understood that it's no good to start own life with killing people. I had a case. I was sitting in a cottage. I needed to hide 200 grams. And I got the compulsive thought, like an inner voice. It's high time to quit. Enough. There is no way through. And I just repacked the weight into four 50-gram pieces, left them and wrote to the boss. That's it, bro. We part ways. Voice upon high? Seems like this, yes. Do you believe in God? Yes. You are a Christian, Orthodox. Yes, Orthodox. Do you visit church? I do. Didn't used to before that. What plans, dreams for the future do you have? For now, I would like to find a legal normal job or a little own business to start earning money legally, even not so much. How much money do you need to feel happy? I love traveling, so maybe $5,000 is top for me. Monthly? Yes, but even $500 are enough. I'm sure, I know myself. Not so much. My viewers keep asking me, where did I spend the easy money before? What about you? You were, let's say, 17 when you were studying in police academy right after school. You were earning two, three thousand bucks monthly. Where did you spend the cash? Well, I entered it to buy a car. What car? Well, BMW E39. I liked this model, so I went there to buy it and to become financially independent. Eventually, I didn't buy it. I almost collected the needed sum, but it turned out that I wouldn't buy it anyway. I tried to spare money on it later, but the circumstances were such that I needed money for other purposes like phones, dates with girls and other shit like clothing, expensive food and so on. Were you afraid of prison? Do you know what terms are applied for drug sellers in Russia? Up to 20 years. Yeah, 25 maybe. Okay, 20, 25, let's take 20. Of course I knew. But until you face it on your own, you don't believe it's real. We all know we'll die one day, but we don't think we'll die right now. However, it can happen. The building can fall down. There is such a possibility. The same is with this. You realize that you can go to jail and there are even many preconditions for it. But you will keep telling to yourselves that you are some kind of exceptional. All exceptional ones are in prison or will be there soon. There is nothing that would prevent you from going there. Were you really afraid of prison? Not so. 
Not so is on 20%, maybe. You weren't afraid of anything, I see. First, I was really scared, this affected my mentality. I've never been so scared before. I remember I took my first hide, was sitting and packing it in the kitchen. You took it from the store, right? From a store, right, in a forest. So sitting and packing it in the kitchen, and I heard a usual thing. Someone stopped near my window. I heard brakes screeching. I suddenly realized the sound is from a car. What car? Of course, a cop's car. Who can stop near your window? I've never been so scared. I had fights in my life. I fell down from a big height. But this was beyond comparison. That was another type of fear. Haven't this scared you off? I just managed to step over this fear. And later it went away. Absolutely. When? In three months, maybe, yeah. Should be drugs legalized in Russia and other CIS countries. I would partially agree that they should be legalized. But maybe only weed and increase the quantity of drugs you may carry with. I got it. Couriers' work will become easier. They don't need to make 10 rides. No, they wouldn't just send to prison so many people who just bought stuff. Because if you have one gram of methadrone, today it's considered as a large quantity. And it's covered by another article. Oh my god. You mean not to arrest regular drug users, yeah? Yes, like in Ukraine, starting from 6. But of course, it will make the business easier. More people will be involved, but the salaries would drop. I got it. Rivalry. Yes. Express in one sentence, speak in this camera, why have you come? Speak not with me, but with viewers. Well, I came here to clearly answer the question. This job will do no good for anyone under any circumstances. I've been talking with many people, with shop owners, store managers, couriers. There are no happy persons. Maybe initially there was an illusion of happiness because of big money that fell down on their heads. But these people kept doing what they did and they cannot do anything else. And if they quit just like me, they would realize they cannot do anything for same salary. And it's a better way, if you need money, to go to a car wash or to construction works. And if you want to build a good career, of course go to the university. This is far better. Or get knowledge in the internet, this is very easy today. And build a normal legal life. Otherwise, you won't have anything except pain and disappointment, as nobody has. Just watch the stories about Mexican drug lords, with nobody to live till old ages and so on. Just don't do this. But if you are in already, quit as soon as possible and that's it. The sooner you quit, the better future you have. And don't forget about prison. You'll be the lowest class as a courier. You will tell them I want to quit, they will answer, OK, just finish these hides, and you will be arrested. This happens often. I leave the conclusion to you. Neither me nor today's guest can impose own will. We can just show you the example, thanks to our acquaintance and experience. For our today's hero, everything ended well, thanks God. And he poisoned not so many people. But if you decide to go to the drug dealing business, it can end tragically for you. 
Either in prison or even in grave.